you horrible lot back. Um, been using M- MUX or MUX, however you pronounce it. Um, apparently, when I interviewed them the other day, the team said it's actually pronounced MUX. Um, but, so I've been calling it MUX like an idiot. But uh, I've been using this quite a lot. And it's. I think it's going to be increasingly my go-to place for any on-chain perp stuff, just because I think over time, um, similar to how the evolution of trading spot went from Uniswap or SushiSwap or wherever you trade, and then nine times out of ten now, I'm going directly to the likes of Matcha or CowSwap or the DeFi Llama meta aggregator and stuff like that. So um, just as a high level, uh, Mux, <laughs> pronouncing it right now, Mux is um, a perps aggregator effectively. So there's three, technically three DEXs that trades are rooted through now through Mux directly, um, through GMX, or through gains. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. So one, the the aggregate is going to price um, wherever the greatest depth of liquidity for that specific trade is across those three DEXs. So if it's, I don't know, if it's ARB, for example, which I'll, I'll show you in a second, um, that isn't listed on gains or it's not listed on GMX, obviously. So naturally it roots it directly through the MUX pool, which has ARB in its liquidity pool. So, uh, and again, if there's if you're looking for like ETH or BTC, obviously it's, it's across all three platforms, but then it'll look for the best price, best fund rate and all that good stuff and like lowest fees. So um, as more and more kind of perps platforms come on online, I wouldn't be surprised to see them integrate with MUX um, primarily because they want additional layers on top of them. Like you wouldn't be a uni swap and not want to be plugged into one inch and DeFi Llama aggregator and matcher and all those kind of things. It's it's kind of not an issue for them. They know more trades are going to get rooted through there. That's like the best price and it kind of it kind of incentivizes the underlying protocols themselves to be the best they can be as well. So they're not losing out to competition. So um I think we'll see the evolution of perps, on chain perps go towards what we've seen with um, on-chain spot trading, similar. Um, maybe maybe even we, we get further afield and, and start seeing kind of aggregation with um, options and just have like a one-stop shop for on-chain derivatives, but who knows. Um, so yeah, if you want to listen to this straight from the source, you can if you head to the YouTube channel and you should be able to see um, the Mux team come on and just have a chat about the kind of product origin story, the kind of the founder origin stories and where they're at, where they're heading and a few features, but just wanted to make a bit more of a um, in-depth explainer and, and how you can use it. And sometimes when I'm interview, interviewing founders and things like that, it's, it's often difficult to talk, talk about tokens because, you know, they're kind of bound to not look like the self shilling and stuff like that. So we can get a little bit more in detail on that kind of stuff, but um, just as a high level, so MUX.network, always check your, I don't know, DeFi Llama directory or CoinGecko for the, for the correct links. Don't just type it in Google. There's a lot of phishing links going around. Um, so landing page, pretty neat. So, uh, supercharge for traders, trade crypto with zero impact, up to 100x leverage and aggregated liquidity. Mux protocol can take care of the hassle so that you experience optimized DEX trading on our platform. Yeah, pretty set, pretty straightforward. Um, again, so a few kind of unique selling points, key features, zero price impact. $100 or a million dollars position will always be zero price impact. 100x leverage, so you can go up to 100x on, on Mux, which is, you know, <laughs> not really my thing but yeah go for it if you wish self custody obviously trading out your wallet aggregated liquidity mux roots positions to suit liquidity sources to support needed sizes uh multi-chain native trade on any deployed networks with the same unified liquidity depth i'll show you what that means and how that works in a sec um and yeah it's it's, it's a great kind of user experience they um, cover that as well but um right so we bring it up Obviously, it's a great time to look at it because everything's absolutely ripping. Michael Sale is happy. He's actually back to break even now on his $4 billion bet on Bitcoin, which is good. So 
you're going to see much of a muchness across these perps dexes, particularly if they have this kind of AMM style liquidity underlying it. So um, basically what we're looking at here is just the, the ETH USD, ch USD chart on uh, the four hour. So again, we can just select here all of the markets. ETH, Bitcoin, ARB, ABAX. So obviously if you're on GMX, some of the kind of, not criticism, but a little bit of the drawback is that you, there's only a few assets that you can trade on there. And that's, I think that's more down to a risk appetite for the GLP holders. And um, I have seen a few others like GMX Forks that have effectively, instead of just having one liquidity pool, they'll have kind of tranched or tranched, however you pronounce it, or siloed liquidity pools that maybe like the low, low risk bucket might have Bitcoin, ETH and like some stables in it. The next one might have, let's say, the assets that you're seeing on screen now, ETH, Bitcoin, ARB, AVAX, BNB, and Phantom. So like slightly more, still large caps, but you know, still often suffer a larger volatility swing. So, um, and then you could even go further afield and I don't know, have a liquidity pool that's in the higher risk tier where it might be ETH, Bitcoin, ARB, uh, a few others, and then some maybe longer tail assets that um, you could trade perps against. Now, the reason you wouldn't want to group all them together is because um, if they've got lower liquidity spot and you're trying to trade against them, it's obviously more prone to being able to manipulate markets, particularly if, if you can kind of figure out where the Oracle prices are feeding into on the, on the decks. Um, additionally, a lot of people don't want to take on the additional risk with kind of long tail assets that have high amounts of liquidity. I mean, high amounts of, high amounts of volatility, so it does, doesn't necessarily make sense. But if you kind of tranche them, in like kind of high risk, medium risk, and low risk LPs, obviously you'd expect the higher risk um, LP bucket to be able to pay you more fees. Um, so, and I know for a fine fact, there's a lot of people, particularly in the blocknet <laughs> community, that would be all in on that higher risk bucket. But so, yeah, as you as as you say on on Mux, you can see there's there's a shit ton of assets. There's a lot more than what you'd get on GMX. Um, and because and the reason for that is because it's tapping into GMX, it's tapping into gains, and then it's also tapping into its own liquidity pool. So you've got um, a total of 92 assets. You've got some gains, commodities. You can get you can even get gold on here, which is pretty good. Obviously, you can go through gains directly, but um, I'll show you why you might not want to do that in a sec. You've got gains forex pairs, which is cool. Um, gains indices and gains stocks as well. So just want to see if oh, they're missing a trick. Not having micro strategy on here, but yeah, is what it is. Maybe maybe the good counter trade is to buy McDonald's stock if the market crashes, because everyone will end up working there. So, but yeah, just just as I said, kind of much more assets to trade. Um, and again, you don't have to go looking around from where the best price is for those assets. You just know you can turn up to Mux, and then you're going to get the best route price for it. So. Right, I'll get into the trade and UI first before I get into liquidity and stake and all the leaderboard and shit like that. So, um, if, right, what assets have I got? So, I've just got a residual amount of ETH here, right? So, let's see. I don't know. I want to be a complete degenerate and go like 50x long on, on ETH here. Uh, maybe let's dial it down a little. Uh, to be repeated at home. Uh, right, so basically buy long, sell short, really simple. Um, select your base asset. So if I had stables here, maybe I'll just swap to stables. Work that out. Bear with me a second. Do, 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 do. is on the um, Academy wallet. What's this buy button here? Mm, is it for a yeah, ignore me. I'm just checking what the buy button was on the new uni UI. So, um, right, where are we at? So, 
Let's say I've got 228. That's for the cold jury. Let's, uh, so have a look at the daily, see where we're at. 5% five percent move down. I'm screwed. Fuck it. Let's let's do it. Twenty X. <laughs> what do they say on WWE when you're a kid? It's uh, kind of not to be repeat at home. So before I confirm the long, right? Um, this is important. So obviously it gives us the index price, the market price. Um, the filled market price will be likely a bit higher, a bit lower. Uh, than the market price at the moment. After your order, market order transaction is confirmed and change your order before we fill the latest market move. You want to fill your order at the exact price, please place limit order. But we're chads, we don't we don't place limit orders, we just market buy. Um, yeah, so it, it effectively breaks it all down there. But here, really, really simple. But anyway, yeah, what I'm getting at is, so how do you know where it's rooting through? Not that you should have a preference because it's going to find the best price for you anyway, but... You can effectively click MUX, GMX, or GAINS, depending on where you want to kind of read that through. Or you can click auto match. It's just going to pick it up. So um, above where it is market price on the little toggle here, which you can see, um, that's going to show you where it's going to be directed through. So um, I'll show you how that just automatically detects. So like, let's say if we go through ARB. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. It's still gonna route you through MUX. So yeah, with with R because um, gains and GMX aren't hosting R yet for trade, and then obviously it just routes through. But we look at something like I don't know. Let's say we want to trade Solana, then you see immediately it's it's it switches over to uh, gains. So what about uh, let's say let's say ETH again. So with a $288 position, yeah, it just routes through MUX. Let's see if we scale this up. Um, USDC. $1,000, yeah, it'll take that through MUX. 10000 100000 million, <laughs> 10 million. Yeah, it's going to allow that to route through MUX. Uh, what about if we do so at a thousand dollars through MUX? Yeah, it's a ton of large depth of liquidity. If we try to do uh, uni, for example, that defaults to. GMX, and again, BNB. So yeah. Yeah, MUX is handling a lot of liquidity, which is great. Um, when I was going through this with the team the other day, it was showing, um, once it was increasing liquidity that MUX couldn't handle, for example, it was it was directly rooting it to, to somewhere else. So um, let's try die. So, yeah, so MUX seems to be handling a lot. But I think what I'm getting at here is once uh once MUX can't handle it on its own pairs, it will directly route it through somewhere else. Um, if it's I don't know die. Phantom, for example. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to show how it roots through, but it's it's uh the depth of liquidity must be enough to handle uh these sizes I'm trying to put through. But yeah, so if we switch it through I don't know what we long into there. Uh what about yeah, fuck it, we'll do a box with culture. 20x long, a box. So I can put my take profit in there and put my stop loss in there. If I want to go to advance, take profit, percentage gain, or stop loss, how much loss we want to put in, really simple. Liquidity source, um, 7,000 a box, MUX, USD, 
no profits. Liquidation price is seventeen dollars uh, twenty-six. Collateral two hundred eighty-three. Fees collected for four dollars fifty-five, and the spread's not point five. So yeah. Now we just confirm that. Just approve the contract, obviously. Max cap. And then longing AVAX. I deserve to get Rex for longing AVAX, but here we are. So then your positions down here, obviously you can immediately close. You can add to it. Um, if you're getting a bit too close to your um, liquidation price and things like that. Sometimes the chart for some reason looks a bit grayed out, but if you just mess around with it for a sec. Um, if you do see that, just mess around with it and it should show up. Obviously, you can expand. Uh, it's really, really seamless, to be fair. It's not laggy at all. You've got all your tooling on the side. So, yeah. Um, pretty simple, really. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that I might have missed off there. I don't think there is. So, anyway, right. Moving on from that, uh, what's interesting is we've got BNB, Optimism, Avalanche, uh, Phantom as well. Some test nets on there as well, Polygon, Scroll. So there's a bit of alpha for you. Um, right, liquidity. Some people, when we released the article, which you can find on blockmates.com, got a little bit confused, but it's really, really not that difficult. Um, so immediately you see the stake APR, which is great. Uh, let's have a look what GMX is doing. Not to compare because I think they're both fucking great, but. Um, GMX itself is five, GLP, um, 25.71. Right, so the APR on Arbitrum without any additional boosted ES GMX rewards is 25.71%, which is great. That's paid out in ETH, so that's great. We don't want additional emissions. If we can get them, that's fine, but um, I always look at the base yield um, as my kind of go to. So, provide liquidity through buying MUXLP, the protocol's liquidity provider token. Liquidity providers can stake MUXLP to earn protocol income, protocol fees, plus any third-party DEX mining rewards and MUX rewards. So currently, it's we're at sixty-three point seven one percent, which is a bit of kind of a bit of a joke, really, because it's that's, that's really really high. And again, if we're looking at base yields, so the current ETH APR is fifty-two point six seven percent, which is great. Um, and then we've got projected ETH APR so we're expecting so the current is 52.68 but that's based on because obviously everything's going mental at the minute and everything's ripping projected you probably expect it to kind of get a um a more time weighted average APR of 44 percent so um and then they're obviously giving you a little bit of uh MUX on top of that 11 percent so even if you if you were to calculate it up at the current APR 63.72 but even, even if we were to chill out and revert to the mean a little bit, you're coming in at like 55.24. So still fucking good, if you ask me. Really, really good. Total supply, 24.5 million. Protocol owned, which is great. Um, so any of those rewards, you're not going to get the protocol realizing those and selling on you. So that's a really good percentage. So here effectively, yeah, it looks really good. It looks really good. So if we had to buy or sell that, uh, we'd just effectively be selecting our talk and what we want to put into it. Um, current price is not 1.042. So that's an index price of all the underlying assets in that pool. So any of these tokens, ETH, USDC, USDT, DAI, Bitcoin, Phantom, and Arbitrum. So this is an index price of all those assets in that specific pool. So it gives you the price of not 1.042. If all those assets continue to rip upwards, then obviously uh, that kind of index price will go up as well. So effectively, all you do there is select which asset you want to put in. Um, right, so this is something not a lot of people might realize. So if you think ETH is going to continue to rip here, um, but you still want to earn these fees, then you could just deposit ETH in here and allow that underlying ETH to appreciate as well. Or if you're a bit more kind of risk averse and you want to just put stables in and earn a slightly muted volatility yield from, from the MUXLP, then you can do that as well. It doesn't really matter what asset you put in, but if similar to how people settle um, 
Bitcoin futures with Bitcoin or USDC perps, like our USDT perps, it's it's kind of got that leverage play on. If the underlying assets it's going to go up as well. So, um, yeah, and then once you've bought it, then you just stake it, and then you can just see it in here. Then you're going to be earning your uh, claim bill rewards. This is really interesting. I think I'm going to actually put a sizable position in here because I think um, just there's a bit of mute volatility. You always want some assets that are just kind of generating yield. And if I'm getting paid 40, 50% in ETH to do so, then that's fine by me, you know. Right, this is the bit that people were a slightly confused about, but it's not that difficult if you think about it, right? So let me see if I'm zooming in on that a little bit. So staking, you can earn protocol income, protocol fees from third-party DEX mining rewards and MUX rewards and VE MUX lock staking and MUX LB staking. All staking will take place on Arbitrum, right? So you need the actual token on Arbitrum to stake, even though you can trade on multiple different avenues. So the, the MUX staking rewards are currently, uh, the VE MUX, is still really, really good. So they're 37.74% uh, projected kind of median APR of 31.7. So even... Um, the projected MUX stake rewards are uh, like 6 to 13% uh, higher than the GLP rewards on, on GMX. I'm not saying this to be like, oh, it's better than GMX or anything. I'm saying it because there's kind of um, yield arbitrage you want to think about that way for similar sort of products. Um, I probably shouldn't be doing this video, to be honest, because um, it's probably going to give the way it came away. But here we are. Uh, and yeah, you're going to get additional MUX rewards on top of that as well. So let's have a look. I really like this graphic. Um, so you can buy MCB, which is their which is their token. It's, because, it's called that because they used to be um, MC Dex. So they kind of pivoted and chart looks pretty good. Obviously not financial advice or anything, but um, yeah, take from that what you will. So you'd buy MCB, you'd lock it, You'd get VEMUX, um, and then your yield that you derive would be paid in MUX and ETH. So as you can see, you buy MUX, it kind of directs you what you need to do. Lock it, you get a VEMUX. Your yield is generated in ETH and MUX, as according to this. So 37.75% in ETH, and then 16.87% um, boosted in MUX. Um, and then with your MUX, you can choose to vest it to more MCB, which will take a year, or you can relock it to VEMUX and kind of compound that yield. So if you just click over each token when you're on this page, it kind of shows you what you can do. So um, MUX and VEMUX are non-transferable. MCB is the tradable token. Um, that's the one that you lock for VEMUX, and you receive this MUX token as kind of a non-transferable Think about this more as like your ESGMX, if you know that dynamic. That can vest directly to my MCB, and you can realize that over the course of a year. <coughs> Excuse me. Or again, you can just kind of restake that perpetually, kind of increase that if you're kind of bullish on it more long term. MUXLB, very, very simple. Um, you're going to earn yield in ETH and MUX at the APR of 52.69 or 44.23 plus your 11% on top. So um, what's what's, diff what's a little bit different between this is the dynamic between the liquidity token and the MUX staking token rewards. This is like a, what's this? Like a 60-40 split. So 60% going towards LPs 40%, maybe a little bit higher, going towards um, MUX token stakers. So on GMX, it's always been a 70 30 split. This is a dynamic range depending on um, if the protocol needs more liquidity. So they obviously they can direct more fees towards um, the LP side, or if they're kind of looking to incentivize more kind of st token staking participation. So, um, but kind of to round up on that. The, the, the kind of natural real yield on that is, is fantastic if I do say so myself. Um, and yeah, and you've got your stake and stats and rewards at the bottom, pretty simple. Leaderboard. 
traders doing pretty well. <laughs> 36 months, 60. You only need one at that price. That player. Um, redeem. All right. Yeah, so this is interesting. So um, if I go back to the trade page. Let's see I'm still not in profit. Oh, anyway. um, so let's say, right. So effectively, the way this is working with with the underlying liquidity pools on MUX or gains or GMX, let's say you like did a really really good trade and you um you did a really good trade and there wasn't sufficient liquidity on that specific asset on say gains to pay you out right so what what would happen there is the the if that you were supposed to be paid out in or the usdc that you were supposed to be paid out in because that it couldn't naturally take it from the gains bill because you've you've performed such a great trade that um there wasn't enough liquidity in on the underlying pool that you were technically trading against to actually pay you out what it does here is it effectively mints you redeem MUX tokens. So like, let's say it paid you out 90% because that's how much liquidity was there available on the underlying decks to pay you out your, your trading trading reward or trading fee or profit and loss, whatever you want to call it. But there was a remaining 10% that I couldn't, couldn't actually pay you because the liquidity just wasn't there for it. This is a very niche and very un- Kind of common occurrence but if that were to happen what would happen is the remaining 10 percent would be um effectively given to you as a receipt in mux token and then after you receive the mux tokens you can effectively just come here they'll be in your wallet and then you can redeem the remaining 10 percent from the mux liquidity pool or the gmx liquidity pool probably from the GM, gmx liquidity pool um and this is more an issue when it doesn't necessarily happen because there's not definitely liquidity on the specific pair itself it's usually when it's a chain so um i don't know if you were trading let's have a look this is a good example so um because you can trade avax uh oh, that's a better example Oh, man. Right, let's say, let's say this, for example. So if we use ETH for this example, there's $6 million worth of liquidity on Arbitrum. There's nearly 100 grand's worth on BNB, 138 grand on Opt Optimism, 100 grand on um, Avalanche, and 113 grand on Phantom. So there's there's definitely a lot, a lot less ETH on the BNB chain, but let's say you perform the trade on uh, BNB chain and... Say for example, you your profit was 110 grand, right? The ETH on um, BNB wouldn't be enough to support that. So what would happen there is the remaining kind of 10k or whatever it is, 10k 600, would be effectively in MUX ETH, and then you could be able to come here and actually redeem it for um, the underlying asset on on Arbitrum or on whatever chain you wanted, effectively. So that's how it kind of balances the LP. Uh, and your profit and loss if it was too high compared to the liquidity on that specific chain. Stats leaderboard, um, pretty standard now. Won't go too much into that. And then again, if you want to create your referral, then go for it. Uh, fees discount. Yeah, pretty standard. Um, but yeah, other than that, pretty straightforward if you ask me let's just have a look what happens when we switch to bnb go to trade doesn't want to do that anyway um happy days because i'm now one dollar 83 in profit by taking on a 20x long <laughs> Great risk reward. Follow me for more trading tips and advice. Just kidding. Um, 
but yeah, that's the kind of long and short of it. So that's the MCB token. Not a great depth of liquidity, which let's see if there's any more. What chance? Oh, yeah, there's 1.3 million on, on this pair, so. so that's much better. Uh, it's kind of gecko saying 41 million. Cap, is that correct? Yep, 41 million market cap, fully diluted at 52, so not a lot of MUX left. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I think I think the end goal would be to have more DEX integration uh, and have more um, siloed kind of liquidity pools with higher risk, medium risk, which the team said that they're they're looking at. So. Um, keep an eye on that. Pray for my AVAX long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if there's any other protocols that you'd like us to cover, I'm, I'm happy to do these. They take like 45 minutes out of my day. So it's, it's it's a lot easier than me sitting down and writing a, an article that'll take two weeks. So um, if you leave it in the comments, just let us know. Uh, and if you're still listening, please consider subscribing to the YouTube and the newsletter. We need um, the more subs subscribers and things like that we get, the better guests we can get on effectively. So it only takes two seconds. And um, if you want us to start bringing on like some of the big hitters, I think we'd love to have the likes of Vitalik and I don't know, Arthur Hayes and I don't know, Michael Saylor. <laughs> and maybe one day when we have a, a large enough following, then, then we'll be able to do that. But uh, yeah, um, thanks again. Newsletters in the description as well. If you want to subscribe to that? Lots of good stuff, lots of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And take it easy. Speak to you next time.